Hey everybody, this is me, the Undead Viking, and this is Gardens of Mars. Gardens of Mars is a new game from Big Kids Games, in which two to five people are going to be taking on the role of a gardener who is trying to save the planet Mars uh, by putting these crazy plants all over there. And if they are able to put these plants in certain lines or certain shapes and what have you, they're going to earn some points. And basically the person who does the best job of gardening Mars, and therefore saves the planet, uh, is going to be the winner. Now this has... Uh, quite a few different mechanisms going on, uh, the, is, but the big thing in the game is it's dice drafting, and dice drafting means is that like one person like rolls the dice, and then they, they you know you get a certain results of that, and then that the first person is going to take one die, and they're going to take the action you know the, which is going to move your your gardener on the planet, uh, and then they t t you know process their turn by planting these different flowers on 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 guard on, on mars and then the next person looks at the remaining dice they take one they take their action and so forth until there's no more dice available and then the next person that didn't have any dice available they are going to collect dice depending upon their location on the board they're going to get a certain number of dice they're going to roll those and then you're going to hold do the process all over uh it is a heck of a lot of fun it is i, I know I, it's kind of funny if you watch my videos you know i i talk a lot about gardening games um which i kind of re reference uh the the process of like you know there's a lot of games out there that like um, I'm going to make my garden here, and, and you go ahead and make your garden over there, and you and I are going to like be done making our gardens in about 45 minutes, and whoever made the best and cutest garden is going to win. And, and I, I reference those because there isn't a lot of player interaction going on. Um, but this is a gardening game, but there's a heck of a lot of player interaction going on because you can block each other. Um, you can uh, you, you you can like basically kind of have some influence over where other people can go and what they have options to do and something something like that. So it can be a little bit mean spirited, which is something of course I do like about games. But anyway, let me show you how the game is played. It's a heck of a lot of fun and it's really simple to learn as well. So then we'll come back here and I'll tell you why I enjoy it. All right, cool. All right, so here we have Garden of Mars, and I've gone ahead and set up a five-player game of this. Now, there are going to be some differences when you play with less players. Uh, for starters, you might notice that there's these little rocks over here. Rocks are going to take up spots on the board, and also they impede movement. Uh, the game actually states that you're supposed to like just take, when you put the rocks on the board, you just drop them, and where they land, then you go ahead and place them in that spot. I find that to be kind of fun. Uh, you could have it that, like, like you can pick one player, you know, everybody they can roll the dice and, and that person gets to pick where it goes or whatever, but just have some fun with it as far as the rocks go. Now with five player game we only have one rock, but you're gonna have more of those if as you uh have less and less players, basically taking up spots on the board. Now, as I said, the whole point of this game is to go and move your little gardener around the board, and when they land on a spot, they're going to, you know, plant a plant on that spot. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to score points uh, in, in a couple of ways. Well, whenever you plant a plant, you're just going to score a point regardless. But the big thing about it is, is that you're trying to get plants that are alike, because if you put a plant next to another plant of the same type, so if you plant like these two red plants, this would be worth two points because of the fact that you've gone ahead and made up like two plants of the same kind. And that also, it isn't like, but it, uh, one of the misconceptions I had at the very beginning until I reread the rules again, it isn't how many plants you're next to. So like here's these three like black plants or whatever. If I planted this one, that would be worth three points uh, for that for that little chain there it wouldn't be worth one. It isn't a situation where it's got to be like connecting or anything like that. As long as you can like have a extended uh, connection or what you have. So like you, you can even have it like bending around this rock or whatever because these things are connected. Uh, that would be worth points when you place that, that down there. Now obviously what you're going to be doing with the other players is that the other players are going to be you know, building up these plants as well on the, on the planet. And you're going to be building off of those chains. Now another way that you're going to score points is that if you can satisfy 
some of the missions that are set aside. So there's five mission cards that are set out, and these are open missions that anybody can fulfill. And so these you know, are, are you know, fairly fairly basic and straightforward. If you have three of these red paint, red plants up there, that's going to be worth three points for you. Um, you know, Some of the ones that are going to be tougher are one, like this one, where you're going to need a, a, a black plant, uh, a blue, a yellow, and a red um, together in like this sort of a diagram. Now, it doesn't have to look exactly like this. That's what those little arrows mean on either side. So, you know, you, you know as far as like this concern, construction it, it could be you know any as long as these four are in this little type of uh, uh, shape you're gonna get those points you're gonna get like seven points now these don't go away normally um, the missions that are gonna be out there anybody can get them and they can get them as many times as they possibly can as long as they're the ones that create that uh, creation that's on the planet now you have the ability to kind of wipe the slate clean and replace them uh, with other mission cards uh, like say like you just are at a point where you're not gonna be able to score those anymore you can get rid of them and that's where these little cubes come in now depending on the like if I was uh, the, the player with the white meeple there uh, you know, if you had, you get five of these cubes, everybody gets five, and you can take certain special powers. One of the special powers is that you spend one of your cubes, and you don't get those back, so that you have a limited number of uses of your special powers. But you, when you use that, you can wipe the slate clean and put five new missions out there. Now, you might have noticed these secret missions. Each person's going to get three of these secret mission cards. Uh, the secret mission cards have just another way that you can score those points. So here you have one, if you just put a green next to a black, and as as long as you know they're, they're they're together, that's worth three points. Now this one has this little purple, and it says seven. It's worth five. So what does that mean? If you are if you place the seventh purple plant in a chain, so like one of those like connection chains that I talked about, if you put put the seventh plant down, so you like normally you would score seven points, you get to turn it in for five. Now you you can turn them in for both. You know you, you I guess technically like you might even qualify for both, and if you're really lucky in a turn. But you only get to pick one, and so you know you have to turn those in. So here you have kind of the same thing again. The seventh, as far as that goes, here's one. The fourth green, or if you can make this little diagram, that's going to be worth eight points if you can do that. And so you get these secret missions, and you keep these obviously secret. Also, I should mention that you do get a certain number of plants to start with. In a five-player game, you have eleven, but you get you know quite a few as you go up the chain, as far as. Uh, like you know, with two players, you get over twenty plants, so you, you you do get quite a few. I also should mention that you will have one of these, you know, like a little player screen. Um, I don't have that out there, so you can actually see the board. But you keep obviously your secret mission cards are secret. You don't want anybody to know that. And but you also keep the plants that you have, you know, to yourself as well. I should also mention that you have the ability to swap out on your turn. You can swap out for what there's, you notice how there's these six plants, one of each type in these two little incubator spots. You can swap out a plant that you have for one of those as well on your turn because, you know, just so you, like, obviously, like, if you're in a situation where, you know, the plants you have, you can't do anything with, you can swap those out. And there's going to be a lot of interchange between that and the other players that are on the board as well. Uh, because, you know, obviously you're putting a plant up there. Maybe that's the plant somebody needs to complete, you know, their secret mission or whatever. So it's kind of neat how that kind of, ha you know, not really an economy, but it has kind of a life of its own, if, as you will, as each player is going to be taking advantage of those two incubators. Now, a couple of things. Uh, that is considered a special action as well, so it does cost you a cube to do it. And you can do that at any point during your turn. So, like, if you all of a sudden realize, like, at some point during your turn, oh my gosh, I really need that that plant before you like you 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 plant your plant on that particular turn. You don't have to do it at the beginning of your turn or anything like that. It can be whenever. One more thing, and I'm actually going to show you the dice drafting part of the game. Um, there are uh, these. Um, like little, your gardeners or whatever, and each one of these has their special powers. You're going to be, you know, when you when you draft, you kind of draft these in your hand. The first player gets three, they pick one, they hand the two to the person on their left. That person draws another one off the top of the character deck. They have three to pick from, they pick one, they pass it to the left, and so forth. And so you have one. So if I was Beeswax here, um, that would be my little gardener. And if I looked at his special abilities, he has, for one cube, I can move over another gardener on my move, which, you know, and I'm going to show you how the moves work and everything like that. Normally, you can't, you know, move over 
a, a, a gardener or a rock, but if I spend a cube, you can. And if I spend two cubes, I can add one to my movement to kind of get to a spot. And you might be saying, well, why does that matter? Well, it can matter a great deal. So the way the game works is that your your particular, where you know, if I'm, I'm the white meeple, what you're going to do on your beginning of your turn is you're going to count how many open spaces you have around your particular meeple. Now, if you're on the edge, that's going to take away those spaces. If you have a bunch of flowers around you, that's going to take up those spaces as well. Technically, I'd probably already, I'd be on a flower, most likely. But, so then in this case, there'd be four. In this case, there'd be five. In this case, there'd be three. So, you know, you can see how that changes up. Now, with that, then, that is how many dice you get. So if I was in that situation, I would get three dice. And this is only if there were drafting dice not available. If, like, the like the player before me had, there were still two dice, I just, I get to, I'd have to take those two dice that, that, that were available to me. But, as you can guess, this is a drafting game as far as the dice go as well. So as long as there were no dice available, I would take these three dice and I would roll them. And now these would be the dice that people would have to use. There'd be a four, a five, and a one. And those don't get re-rolled until they've been used up. Now, I could take these and I could go ahead and use them to move. Now you might have noticed this blank spot in the middle. You can't plant anything in this spot in the middle, but you can move through it. So if I were to like, and now I'm sitting here, it's like, what if I had like, if I really wanted to get to like this spot, you know, and you have to move in a straight line, mind you as well. So, but you know, that isn't any good. So I'm, I'm actually going to kind of fudge here a little bit and I'm just going to set something up so you can see how a turn would work. So like just looking at, you know, um, well, actually let's look at, you know, these things. So let's say, uh, you know, as, as luck would have it, so I, one, two, three, four, let's just say there were these two purples right there. And so what I could do is on my turn, I could say, okay, I'm going to take this four and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move four in a straight line. One, two, three, four. And now notice I can go past this spot, but I can't end up there. I'm going to end up in this location and like, I, I don't have a purple over here, but I'm just going to take this one. I could place that purple, that, now I plant. So you land there and you plant. Now I should mention also when you plant your flower, that's your plant flower action. You always get to do that as long as there's an empty spot underneath you. And so then you go ahead and you do that and I would count up, I get three points for this because of the fact that I connected those three. And I could go over here and I look and I'm going to get a bonus of three points for that. And I would get six points for that particular action. Now, if I had something really neat, like the fact that there was, like, let's say this green plant was right there. And I went there and I did that same thing. I could also take a look at, I can look at my secret mission here. You know, I have, I'm the one who caused this combination to happen, a, a purple and a green. And I could turn this card in for another three points because of the fact that I created that combo in that spot. Now, if your turn happens and you end up on a spot with another plant, you can't do anything that turn, you just don't get to go. Now, if in this situation there was a person standing right there, I wouldn't be able to go through them. If this rock was there, I wouldn't be able to go through that either. So, those things can block people. Now. If on your turn, for whatever reason, um, you, let's say like uh, on your turn, like you the all was left with this one, right? And you know, for whatever, you know, just as luck would have it, you know, you were maybe up against the edge and you had people like this, like that, you just couldn't go, right? <clears throat> because all that was left was this one and you can't move anywhere. I can't use my special power to jump over because I can't end up on those spots. You just basically lose your turn and if you ever are in a situation where you can't take your turn, you do lose a point for having that misfortune having happened to you. So, in a nutshell, that's ultimately what this game is. Each turn uh, is going to come up and you are going to have, like, as, as soon as the last die is used, whoever the next person's turn is, let's just say it was blue, they're going to count the open areas. And so in this case, there's four open areas because remember, this is still an area. It isn't, it isn't blocked off, but you just can't plan anything. They're going to take four dice and they're going to roll those and then they're going to pick one and they're going to then and the next person left goes, the next person left goes, so they're going to roll those, uh, six, six, five, and a one, 
they're going to pick one of those. So let's say blue says, I'm going to go, you know, one, and I'm going to go here. And maybe like if they plant like a, a, a red in that location, that would make a combo for them so that he, they get those points. Now, this would only be worth one point there because of the fact they didn't make a chain, but maybe they had a larger goal in mind to be able to do that. Um, so the process, it should be pretty apparent. There's one other rule I want to tell you about. If uh, you begin the game, uh, if like the last last die was used, now it's going to be your turn uh, to roll the dice, and you happen to be in a situation where all of the locations around you are taken because you're just you maybe you you got lucky and you planted this one there and you can open that up. You you go ahead and you put that in there, but it's your turn to roll dice. You don't get to roll any dice because of the fact that there is no open area, and then you just skip your turn, and then the next person gets to go through that process. But ultimately, the way the game ends is that one person plants all of their flowers. They put the last flower onto their garden of Mars, and the game ends immediately. There is no, like, everybody gets one last turn to try to squeak some points out. So it can get kind of into a race as far as being the first person to complete. Um, and then you total up the total number of points that everybody has, uh, which has been kept track of, obviously, in the scoring track. And whoever did the best job of planting their garden on Mars uh, will therefore be the winner. So, uh, the game, I mean, it has all these little things that I really like. I like secret knowledge that you keep from other people. I like variable player powers that each person is going to have for each, each person. I, I like any game with dice, pretty much. I like the randomness of dice. And I do just kind of like the way that, like, you kind of watch as, you know, the, the garden of Mars, if you will, you know, kind of populates itself and kind of gets created. And I do, and I like how each turn you have is kind of a little puzzle that you're going to try to figure out and try to make sure that, like, like you're hoping like certain dice are available and because of the fact that this is all open knowledge you, know, you do have the ability to kind of jam people as well you know because of the fact that you can limit their choices when it is their turn as far as when you know what numbers they have you can look over and like if you have somebody that's sitting there like this and you have like um you, you have a four and a one you know you know that if you take this four they're gonna have this one and they're gonna be like that's all they're gonna be able to do you know so you can have fun with it and you can kind of limit the choices the other players have and i like having that little bit of control over what, what's going on but let me talk about that and a whole lot more uh in my final thoughts all right thank you uh, very much for uh sitting through that and learning how to play the gardens of mars now i've already pretty much kind of explained why i liked it but in case you skipped the gameplay um you know the whole, the whole i like games where i can build stuff i like games where when you get done with it you can kind of see uh, what you've created after the game is done. Um, and I like that when I have my own personal board and I create something, but I also really, really like it when it's it's a um, uh, like cooperative effort, if you will. Now, obviously, this isn't a cooperative game, uh, but each person is going to be you know, trying to create you know their way uh, <laughs> of, as far as the way the, the, the garden on Mars is going to look like to accentuate their scoring chances the most. But it's kind of neat to see, you know, what's been created after all is said and done. Now, uh, the thing I like about it is the fact that, I mean, it's got dice, which I, you know, I really like. And I do like having puzzles to figure out on my turn. So, like, yeah, it's, it's really simple when, like, you roll all your dice and then, like, you have all these different numbers to, to choose from. But, you know, when you've got, like, two dice to pick from or three dice or even one die to pick from and you got to take that one die and you got to make a turn and, and, and get as many points out of the turn as you possibly can. And there are, like, certain viable things that, like, I, you know, I've tried to do when I played it. I mean, one of the things is is that, like, okay, I'm going to try to play the game and I'm, I'm going to, like, make sure that, you know, unless I can score big points on my turn i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna like kind of try to stay on other flowers you know so i'm not planting a flower i'm not using up my flowers that i have because you know once you land you got to use one up right so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna like bide my time i'm gonna wait for that perfect turn so like when i when i do cash in my points um you know it's never gonna be for one or two points it's gonna be for three four or five points and you know i've tried that strategy of course you know then you're on the risk of like re not using up your flowers and somebody else is like burning through them and then like and that's where that race comes into mind and that's something i always like about games as well I, I like when there's something to be said for like oh this game lasts six turns so you better get your engine your your victory point engine up and rolling uh quickly 
and, 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 you know, before anybody else does, and so you can start churning out those victory points. But if you have a game where, uh, you know, like, the players themselves kind of determine how long it lasts, that opens up a lot of different strategies. You know, it's like, do you play a little reserved and try to keep the game going a little bit longer? You know, to like, as I said, you know, really cash in on some big points. Do you see the other players doing that? You just start like just hammering away and just trying to get rid of all your flowers so you can be done with it. So there's a lot of things like that that I really enjoy and I really like that. So, you know, it's just, I really, really like uh, this game. I mean, it's just got a lot of stuff going on that I, I, I think are a lot of fun. And um, if you like a drafting games, if you like dice games, I think you're really going to like this one as well. So, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, by all means, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. As always, thank you very much for your uh, time. And uh, until next time, I'm the Ended Viking, telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. And I have my little boy here who wants to say hi, I think. <laughs> can you say hi? Hi. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody.